I want our community to know that our residents in every section of the city of Buffalo will be protected. I want people who are out in our community peacefully protesting to know that everyone peacefully protesting in the city of Buffalo will be protected. My goal as mayor is to bring this city together during this difficult time and to let all of our residents living in every single neighborhood know that they are cared about, that they are protected, to let our peaceful protesters know that their voices are being heard, that we are listening, uh, that we will work with them for real change on the issues of police brutality in the city of Buffalo, racial injustice in the city of Buffalo, and as they exercise their freedom of speech rights, those rights will be protected. I will now open up for any questions that the members of the media have. So, uh, as you know, when Police Commissioner Lockwood saw the video of officers pushing a man uh, to the ground, he immediately suspended those officers without pay and opened up an internal investigation. That investigation is proceeding. Uh, I have asked the police commissioner and his management team uh, to move swiftly in that investigation and that is certainly Commissioner Lockwood's intention. Are you calling for them to be fired? Would you like to see them fired? Uh, I am not calling for them to be fired. I want the investigation to be conducted. I don't want to uh, jump ahead of the investigation. It is very important uh, that officers know that they are getting due process. I can say that Buffalo will be safe this weekend. We have a contingency plan. Uh, we always have a contingency plan. I thank Commissioner Lockwood and his management team working with various law enforcement partners at the local, state, and federal level. I thank Governor Andrew Cuomo uh, for bringing in a large contingent of state police who are embedded with the Buffalo police working with us to make sure that our community is safe. We are always looking at our operations and trying to improve how we deliver not only police services, but every service in the city of Buffalo. Uh, this is certainly under investigation. It's being looked at. But one of the things that the police management has been directing our officers uh, from the beginning of the global pandemic uh, and from the beginning of the national unrest about police brutality and racial inequity is to use common sense. These are very volatile situations, very fast-moving situations. One of the reasons that I imposed a curfew is to protect the residents of our community, to protect peaceful protesters in our community, and to protect property. The um, procedure 
is roughly the same with all of these events with the imposition of the curfew, and that is to give protesters notice that they are approaching the curfew, that they need to start moving, gather their belongings, and they need to begin to leave and go home. Uh, They're given a number of of warnings, uh, and those that remain after the curfew period begins, uh, then the police officers move in and ask those people to vacate the area. He was asked to leave numerous times last night. He uh, was in that area after the curfew. Uh, One of the things that happened before that incident uh, is there were conflicts uh, between protesters. Uh, There was a danger of fights breaking out uh, between protesters, and the police felt it was very important to clear that scene for the safety of protesters. I, I, I do not I do not know the answer to to that. There was that activity in that immediate area uh, uh, during the course of the curfew period approaching, and because of that, the officers felt the situation w- was more volatile at that time and wanted to clear uh, the protesters or the people that remained after the peaceful protest and remained after the curfew from that area. I, I didn't speak in relation to volatility of that individual. I spoke in terms of volatility of the situation. And when a situation is volatile, when there is the potential for violence, when it looks like protesters might start to fight and people are staying after a curfew that has been called, there is the potential that people can get injured. Again, with the gentleman, um, the instructions uh, from the police management to our officers are to be careful, uh, protect our residents, protect peaceful protesters, and use common sense. Are you continuing to speak with We're going we're to monitor the situation. Uh, right now the plan is to maintain the curfew until uh, uh, Monday morning at 5 a.m., but we're going to monitor the situation very closely. Uh, we will consult with the Buffalo Police Department and other law enforcement partners about the circumstances that we're seeing in the city of Buffalo. Um, Those were state police officers. Those were not Buffalo police officers. Uh, So obviously the city of Buffalo does not have the ability uh, to take action against state police officers. But what we were informed of is that that individual was an agitator. Uh, He was trying uh, to uh, spark up uh, the crowd of people. Uh, again, uh, that was a curfew violation. Those people, pardon me, again, uh, those people were there into the darkness. Uh, our concern has been what we've seen in the community when it has gotten dark. Uh, there is the potential for violence, uh, that there's been vandalism, uh, there have been fires set. There has been property vandalized. There have been stores broken into and looted. We wanted to end the potential for those kind of activities to take place. And according to what has been reported to me, that individual was a key and major instigator of people engaging in those kind of activities.
again, and I've answered this question a number of times, there was a very fluid situation, a lot of information coming in. Police officers, managers working in uh, the command center. And the initial reports that came in uh, were that he uh, fell, that he was, um, that he fell. Um, uh, very shortly thereafter, video evidence started coming in that indicated otherwise. As soon as that information came in, uh, Police Commissioner Lockwood took immediate action suspended both of those officers without pay and immediately opened up an internal affairs investigation. And one of the things that the community has been, been saying to us during this period of protest, one of the things that the activists are saying is in situations like that, uh, they want to see a more rapid response from the management of the police department and uh, the response to the incident was very rapid. Well, actually, that is not accurate. Um, Mike DeGeorge is the city's director of communications. He works with many departments on communications issues. But the Buffalo Police Department has Captain Jeff Rinaldo, who is Commissioner Lockwood's chief of staff, that is the principal spokesperson for the Buffalo Police Department. We also have other officers of the Buffalo Police Department uh, that speak for the department on issues. Uh, that's true, Ed. We, we haven't thought it was a conflict of interest. We thought the system has worked well. It has been a coordinating sort of system. Uh, we initially went to that system out of financial concerns, wanting to be efficient for the taxpayers. Uh, so instead of hiring multiple people for that role, hiring one person who could be uh, the director of communications, and could play um, an, uh, a, a role of working to facilitate communications with different departments, including our police department. But it's clear that something was amiss last night. It's clear that something happened, and something perhaps has lost some credibility. So what is next, and where do we go from here? Well, I don't know if there's any perfect institution or any perfect organization. Uh, any place where anyone works, there are breakdowns from time to time. There, there are errors that are made. And I will be the first to say uh, that initial communication uh, was a breakdown. It was an error. But it was a desire to respond to media inquir inquiries very quickly and to provide information to the community very quickly, uh, went with early information uh, that was provided, and that information turned out to be inaccurate, and as soon as that was found out, that was corrected. That is one of the reasons at times the Buffalo Police Department waits a little longer to verify the accuracy of the information. But because of the volatility of this situation, uh, because of the emotion of this protest activity, there was a desire to try to get information to the media and to the community quickly, uh, and it turned out initially not being accurate information. Yeah. Well, you know, I don't know why Erie County Executive 
um, Mark Polenkars is commenting on the Buffalo Police Department. But I will say this. Uh, the Buffalo Police Department has a contingency plan uh, for the safety of our residents, for the safety of our businesses, and to protect the right of people to peacefully protest. And I really thank all of the law enforcement agencies at the local, state, and federal level that are working very closely with the Buffalo Police Department. Can you identify the other police officers who were down there for the same thing? Uh, Commissioner? Can, you do, can we identify them? I don't have both of the officer names. They're younger officers, and um, I heard their name earlier, but I don't have the names with me right now. So. I can uh, find all that out in. Yeah, I, I, I will comment on that sentiment. That is absolutely ridiculous. We're not disbanding the Buffalo Police Department. We're not throwing the city of Buffalo into chaos. Uh, when people have an issue, when there's a burglary, when there is a robbery, when there is a domestic incident, when there is a homicide, people call the Buffalo Police Department and they want them to respond. They want safe neighborhoods, they want safe business districts, and they want to live in a community that is safe. So no, we are not disbanding the Buffalo Police Department, and I will say it quite clearly, that is a ridiculous idea.